What if events went differently? Imagine that Thor's banishment went very differently, or maybe he wasn't even banished at all. In today's interactive Marvel's What If, I would like to explore four different possibilities of how Thor's banishment would have gone differently, and how it would have affected the MCU timeline as a whole. The first possibility that I would like to explore is if Thor was banished to Wakanda. The next is if Loki was banished to Earth instead. The third being if Thor was not banished at all. And the last possibility I would like to explore is the fact that maybe Thor and Loki were both banished to Earth. Be sure to make your choices since this would be an interactive video where you get to pick the process of the story yourself and find out what happened. Sit back and relax. Thor banished to Wakanda. But Thor was convinced that he was now the crown prince and he could make some decisions of his own, then decided to go against his father's decree. He immediately put together a band of his closest friends and his brother Loki in a bid to go and attack Joltenheim and put the frost giants in their place. They were allowed through the Bifrost Bridge portal by Heimdall, who was oblivious of their plans. As if they expected them, they were immediately confronted by the king of the frost giants like clockwork. King Lothi commanded a small number of his armies to surround the Asgardian heroes in a way that provoked them. Thor had told him that they did not come to fight, but rather find a diplomatic way to settle what had happened earlier in the hours. But King Lothli was not convinced. They had come into Joltenheim bearing arms. What they were doing was passing on Joltenheim and that they needed death. Lofi immediately ordered his army to attack Thor and the other Asgardians. They had been doing okay and defending themselves while Lofi ordered that a giant beast be released on them. With the introduction of the beast that attacked them, they became uncoordinated and confused. But soon, with Thor leading and them following, they were able to get back their grounds and coordinate properly against the beast and brought it down over the ice cliff. After they had taken down the beast, Thor and the Asgardians proceeded to attack King Lofi, but in that moment, Odin appeared between the two rival sides and called them to stand down. King Lofi was angry and said that their invasion had gone beyond diplomacy. He then decreed that Asgard should prepare for war, and in that moment, he tried to stab Thor, but after that moment, Odin blasted him back and teleported away with a group of heroes back to Asgard. Back on Asgard, Odin allowed the rest of the band to go, but asked Thor to stay back and proceeded to confront him about his choice to disobey him and attack Joltenheim. He then told Thor that he knew his intentions were pure, but as a king he needed to have the patience and many other virtues. Not everything had to be settled with fists and violence. In that bid to find out the truth of the innocent that happened in that morning, he had rocked the unstable foundations of peace that they had with the frost giants and at this point they had to do a lot to avoid war. Thor then apologized to his father telling him that, that he was only taking initiative as a prince today, what was best for the people, but Odin said that before he could learn to rule, he needed to learn to follow without advantage. He was going to learn what it meant to be a king that served the people and to be diplomatic as a young king without extreme patience from someone who was actually one. Before Thor could speak back, his father pronounced a banishment on him, and he was immediately teleported to Wakanda, where he was going to learn to be a better person and without powers of any kind. He appeared in the middle of Wakanda and was immediately arrested for being an intruder. He had tried to fight back and screamed that he was the Prince of Asgard and
and he could not be treated like this until he was subdued, teased into unconsciousness and thrown into the dungeons. After he had spent a night there, he was brought before the council to face judgment in the hands of King T'Challa, the Black Panther. T'Challa then proceeded to ask him where he came from and how he suddenly appeared in the middle of a country so secure that most people didn't know it existed. He then tried to stand straight up but was jabbed to the floor. He then told T'Challa that he was the God of Thunder and that he was banished to Wakanda by his father to learn what it was like to rule with diplomacy and humility. T'Challa was assumed by everything Thor had said, and asked him if, if there was any way to prove that everything he said was true. Thor said that he was proving enough, proof that everything he said was true, he had no reason to lie. Then he said that he didn't need to learn humility, he said that he knew what humility was, all he wanted for now was an asylum until his powers returned. T'Challa was assumed by what Thor had said before he asked Thor to prove that he really was the god of thunder. Thor then asked T'Challa to fight him. T'Challa agreed and gave him a very fine beating after that. The trashing had immediately humbled Thor, because without his powers, he was just an ordinary man. Thor then asked T'Challa to teach him to become like him. While Thor learned to be a better person, Loki sent a destroyer to kill Thor because he wanted to be king, and after Odin fell into the Odin sleep, he wanted to rule Asgard. But with T'Challa's help and Wakanda's technology, they destroyed the destroyer, and in the process, Thor became worthy again and got back his powers and his hammer. Then him and T'Challa, who had developed a friendship bond, went to Asgard and talked Loki out of more deaths. They ended the issue diplomatically and Odin woke back up to a more peaceful realm. Loki banished to Earth after Thor and his friends came back from Jotunheim, Odin told the others to leave except for Thor and Loki. Odin then told Thor that he had acted foolishly and had no idea that all this while Loki was manipulating him. He knew that Loki was one that instigated the whole situation from the beginning, from the intruders gaining easy access to Asgard and the power casket to convincing Thor to go to Jotunheim to attack the Frost Giants. As Loki tried to protest, Odin told him that there was nothing Nothing more to ask, he had been watching him all this while and was trying too hard to be king. He added that he was never going to be king before he banished him to earth without his powers and his weapons. He had made him just an ordinary man. Loki got to earth feeling extremely terrible and bitter. The last thing Odin told him before he was banished was that he regretted not killing him when he was a baby, and that to add salt to injury, he finally uttered what Loki had always known, that he was never his real son. This knowledge ate deep into Loki and made him hungry for vengeance. But while he was on Earth trying to find ways to get his power back, or get any power that was strong enough to rival that of the gods, he found love instead. He had fallen in love with a mild, meek Earth girl who taught him to become a better person, coming to Earth. Living as a human and falling in love had changed him. As he continued to live on Earth, he got married to the love of his life and had a child with her. He had always been a person with the sweetest mouth and with it, he had pursued a fruitful career in sales. After years of living in New York City, there had been a battle between the heroes and the villains, and around his house, he had been in the ground zero area of the battle. His family became a casualty of the battle. He had lost his wife and daughter. This made his taste for revenge come back. He concluded that Odin made this happen to him. Why didn't fate allow him for happiness, if they were just going to take it away from him horribly. He then decided that a world without his family did not deserve to exist. And after searching for years, he was able to get the powers he had so badly craved. With a direct link to the other, he was able to make a deal with them. He was going to help the others invade Earth, and all he wanted in exchange was enough power to destroy Asgard. He was unable to carry out the plan even after stealing the Tesseract. He was stopped by the Avengers, but with the chaos he had caused, he realized that Earth was just filled with broken people like him. He decided to sacrifice himself to put a stop to the invasion by the others as he saw the Avengers struggle to defend Earth. He ended up saving the Earth in exchange for his life. Thor was not banished at all. 
Odin had told Thor not to fight the Frost Giants or go anywhere close to Jotunheim, and for once, Thor decided that Odin was right and listened to him. There was no point in trying to destroy the fragile peace that existed between the four realms. After much persuasion from Loki, Thor still refused to go. He had made up his mind that Odin was right this time. Then Loki decided to go himself to meet the king of the Frost Giants. He informed him that he was the one who had allowed the intruders he had sent easy access into Asgard. He also told Luffy that he was willing to lead them and again and assist them in bringing Asgard to its knees, but only if Luffy allowed him to be the king after they won the war. While Loki was away, Odin fell into the Odin sleep and made Thor the king. He then gave him the power of Odin. Loki returned to Asgard and was angry, as he felt he had been manipulated to leave Asgard so Thor could be crowned as king. Because of this, he activated and manipulated a destroyer to attack Himdall and allows the Joltans to invade Asgard. But with the Allfather's power fueled by the World Tree and the power of Thor, Thor easily decimated the Frost Giants, assisted by the full force of the Asgardian gods. They had been gone further not to only reduce their armies, but to run them out of Asgard like dogs, with their tails and between their legs. For Loki's betrayal, Thor rather than banishing him like his father, Odin would have done. Thor stripped him of his powers, but left his immortality. He then ordered the royal guards to lock him in the deepest parts of Asgard's dungeons, where he would remain imprisoned until Odin and woke up from the Odin sleep. Thor and Loki banished. As soon as Odin brought the young Asgardian heroes back home, he dismissed the others and insisted that Thor and Loki stayed back with him. He had told Thor that he was disappointed in him, but it didn't change the fact that they are both acting recklessly and that they were not only deserving of their punishment and disgrace, but they were also not worthy of their powers. He then added that for dragging Asgard back to a war that could have been avoided, he stripped them both of their powers and banished them to Earth. He then set the hammer soon after them, so that until any of them is worthy of the power of Thor remains to be taken. On getting to Earth, Thor fell in love and gave up on being king. While Loki learned to be a better person by living among humans, he learned to do good. But without either of them, after Odin fell into the Odin sleep, Asgard's throne remained empty, and seeing that as a weakness, the Frost Giants attacked Asgard and conquered it, taking over and enslaving the gods that resided there. But Loki decided he wanted to save Asgard. He then ventured to the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters where Mjolnir had landed and tried to see if he was worthy of the power of Thor. After a long time, he was finally found worthy. He picked up the hammer and got back not only the power of Thor, but also his own powers back. And with Hemdal's help, he was able to go back to Asgard and he was twice as stronger as he used to be while he was fighting the Frost Giants. Though illusions and sheer strength, he saved Asgard from Jolten's oppression. When Odin finally woke up from the Odin sleep, he named Loki his successor, and Loki permanently became the new crown prince of Asgard, something he has always wanted, while Thor continued to live a simple and happy life on Earth. That's it for this video, it was fun writing the scenarios and outcomes for this particular Marvel's What If. If you notice, this fanfiction is an entirely new thing, compared to the movie, you get to see the new scenarios that didn't exist in the movie at all. We also got to see the human sides of Thor and Loki. The inspiration of this fanfiction was the characters from Thor 2011 and the Black Panther. It highlighted how the story would have gone in four different scenarios if the Thor that was made in 2011 had gone in four different possibilities. We got to see how it would have gone if Thor had been banished to Wakanda, if Loki was banished instead, if Thor was never banished, and if both Thor and Loki were banished together. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see more Marvel's interactive what ifs, and if you guys did enjoy this video and want to see full fan fictions within these scenarios, I can do in-depth fan fictions. Just let me know if you guys are requesting that. But anyways, as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, like, share and turn your notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content and make sure to check out the patreon if you guys want to support these videos and want to see more of these videos i will be doing a ton more and i have exclusive videos coming to my patreon page so don't forget to sign up if you can but anyways peace out guys